Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, we do have quite a serious show today because we are going to cover some pretty deep subjects, but as usual, we'll also be showing you the positive side of life. Now, let me tell you what we're going to have in store. First of all, we have Ian and Helena. Hello. With Hello. the news. Like Where's your say. wave? Oh, <laughs> did you forget all that fuss about doing your wave and then you forget about it? You had to show where the camera was. <laughs> that one there, look, they're looking at you. Well, there we are. Hello. <laughs> okay, so you'll be um, sharing some news with us and obviously we'll be talking yeah. about that tragic news as well about Robin Williams this Absolutely. week as well. Yeah, okay, we'll sad. talk about just the moment. And also on the 14th of April 2012, Connor Saunders' life was taken with just one punch. From that moment on, his family's life was changed forever. And I'll be speaking with his uncle, Jamie Daniel, all about it. And have you ever witnessed something that you really wish you hadn't? Later, I'll be joined with music artist and filmmaker, Neil Hanna, who enjoyed a tough childhood in Newton and witnessed the murder in the USA. So quite some, quite some things we'll talk about today, right? But, wow, well, yeah, definitely. But we're also gonna have some entertainment. Yay. because we'll be speaking to Matt Ramsey about his singing career and how it all began at just 15 when he started singing in the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that like cooking, we're also going to be learning how to make traditional Indian potato cakes, and I have to say they were absolutely delicious. And also we have Jane Rafter's fitness tip on park bench exercises. Do you do any park bench exercise? You don't do any exercise, do you? You do. I do exercise. Do you? I do. Well done. And I walk. It's Ian. I walk. No, I walk. I. I what I try like to you've do, dropped a few pounds in. What, 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 I, what, I, what I try to do now is I try to walk three days a week for half an hour. Brilliant. Uh, okay. And I, I well, probably And I like, I like the look today with yeah. the jeans. Thank you very much. So, uh, <laughs> I forgot about the rest of the intro. Shall I carry on? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be answering a question from a viewer. But yeah, take it away. You're Thank not you. talking to us today. Yes, so Obviously, yeah. Robin Williams. Yeah, very, uh, very sad news for everyone. I think everyone's very, very shocked. Yeah. For Robin Williams, 63. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing, that, amazing, that's, that's, amazing that's, that's achievement. Are you 63? Yeah, it, it, it brings it home <laughs> to me oh, as well no, because I, yeah. I, I was trying to work out this morning what has caused so much um, distress over his death. And uh, yeah, he's a major star. Mm -hmm. But I, then, sort of looking back, you know, I, I remember him going way back to more commended. You know, oh, yeah, I used more to commended. So, so, yeah. And what did he used to do? Sorry. Do you know the. Nanny, nanny, yeah, <laughs> I remember. So the, e every decade, do it. Uh, every decade, he would have a, a different persona, really. Mm -hmm. And so he, you know, people like myself have grown up with him. Yeah. At the same time, so well, it, it, it. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm younger than you, but I feel like. Yeah. I mean, he's an amazing guy. I mean, what he's achieved in his life, like over a hundred. He was a genius. Yeah, wasn't absolute he? Com yeah. comedy genius, but not yeah. just comedy, everything. I think drama. Over a hundred credits to his name, yeah. and just I mean, really some people loved. wonder why on earth would he take his own life? It seemed like he Absolutely. had it all. He had the fame, he had the money. Absolutely. Supposedly, he had everything. But um, I also know from experience that with things like depression, I, yeah. I had, I, I seemingly had, had no reason to get depressed, mm -hmm. but I still did. Yeah. And it really sort of took a toll on me. So sometimes, you know, depression can come to anyone, no matter yeah. what you have and how successful Absolutely. you are. And if you don't, if you don't get the right help for it, that could be the yeah. result. And you can, yeah. you can have an outside facade as well, yeah. but you don't know what's going on exactly. inside. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there was a very interesting uh, thing this morning uh, on one of the shows uh, by a psychologist. And the psychologist was saying that a lot of comedians yeah. actually have depression. I know, I've heard that before. They're quite um, manic, aren't they? And, and sh she thought that the reason was, was that in, in their childhood, they had something that depressed them at the very, very start. It could be a lack of love or understanding mm. or something. And that they went into comedy, a lot of people go into comedy just for the sheer wish to have love wash all over them. Yeah, yeah. As he, well. just, he was amazing. He was incredibly funny. He was incredibly and everything funny. Everything that he achieved, his mm -hmm. films and yeah, everything. He was. But it's just Enormous sad to know value. that it wasn't real in the sense of that happiness that we all saw yes. and that joy. I don't know obviously how he long he was depressed for, but the time that he was and he was still sort of making everyone yeah. laugh, that yeah. he wasn't feeling that. And that's, yeah, really, that's what's sad. really sad as well. I think it's quite sad in the fact that unfortunately he went through two very expensive divorces yeah. and I think he had mm. to pay back millions and millions and felt he had to work like a cart horse really and accept bookings that he wouldn't normally do, certain yeah. films that he didn't yeah. really want to do just to, to earn loads of money. I mean I think he's got six films coming out mm. um, mm. in the future. And, but, and, you know, and a TV series and the TV series yeah. flopped. You know and, 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 and so it was his, um, I think a lot of it as well was with these types of things 
is you know how hard do you have to try to actually overcome these types of problems because it, you it really do. is you do yeah. you can't leave it because I mean, I understand, you know, why people, for example, they turn to exercise and, you know, they, they do different things to, to make themselves feel better. But if it's yeah. something that goes that deep, yeah. you can't use these things because that's why people go, you know, get into addictions and all sorts of mm. things. You can't use these things to, to just kind of feel better for, for a little while. You need to address the real issue, get counselling, yeah. get the help that you need. I think need, he did. I mean, he had he obviously de he did his own personal demons and drink and drugs, yeah, yeah. but he went to... He was, I think, in detox for four weeks. Mm -hmm. What are you just prior. It's such a shame. It's just it such is. a shame. But the one thing as well, just to remember that his wife wants everyone to remember the great Robin Williams, you know, mm. what he yeah. achieved and what he gave to everyone and what mm. he still will keep giving to everyone watching films and not to just remember the unfortunate sad situation that, yeah. that, that drove mean, he, him. He was obviously battling it as well because apparently a few hours beforehand he'd gone to an AA meeting. Mm. So he was obviously still sort of battling it. And you just sometimes wonder what's the trigger what's the final trigger you know that the, well, sort of something that depression's very deep isn't yeah it, isn't it? What sort of, when you're well, depressed not, though sometimes you're not thinking straight anyway no. No. you just cannot see cannot see sort of light at the end of the tunnel even though people tell you looking at things will get better but when you're in that state it's like you really can't see a way out and yeah. you're just dark and it's horrible it's really really horrible yeah. but also i know that people can get through it if yeah. they just hold on yeah. and like well, they keep you know, I, I, trying I went not through that bad an experience but you yeah. know I, and as i say it, it 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 has probably more effect on my age group you know because mm. i'm his age yeah you know there's right. only a, a two or three months difference in our age group, and it, and it, it does it, it, it sort of I thank God, you know, I got through the period and, and this young lady here helped me to get through, yeah. you know, times when I, I had bad times as well. Yeah, you yeah. helped him. I'm so glad because oh. now you're on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> Both of you. Oh, anyway, oh. so it's very sad. But anyway, let's move on to something okay. else, I think. We haven't got much time left now, but... <laughs> we don't. Well, actually, we may as well talk about Lauren Bacall because she's yeah. unfortunately well, suffered yeah. a stroke. So yeah. um, one of the old Hollywood greats has... Um, she was beautiful, wasn't yeah. she? And do you know, I, 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 you know I have a story for most occasions. One oh, day, yes, you did. Do you know her? I or did you know her? I rather? bumped into her one day. Did you? Seriously, quite literally. Over uh, here, it, in the it, UK? It, it was raining in Chelsea, uh, in Knightsbridge, mm -hmm. and, and she was running down uh, Beecham Place as I was running up it. And I bumped Why were you in, running? I bumped, well, because it, was, it was raining, and we were, you know... And we bumped into each oh. other, literally, in Beecham Place. And she said, Mr. Pelham Turner, you've got to be really more, much more careful. She didn't, actually. Hang on a minute. I just like to think I got recognised. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me one of the, one of the, the Lauren Bacall looks. Because apparently she, she could be quite a hard person as well. Mm. And a very loving person. Yeah. A little bit of trivia as well. You know the Vogue um, Madonna song? Do you remember the yeah. fantastic yeah, yeah. video? And apparently she was the last living legend. If you, do you remember? Oh, it was really? amazing. Yeah, I yeah. could sort of almost sing it all, but Lauren yeah, Bacall's the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It's amazing. So, cool. so all 16 of them have passed away. Oh, gosh, yeah. we're talking about that again. Anyway, so moving on. Do we have any more time? <laughs> yeah, we have. Oh, Please, let's, 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 let's talk about happy stuff. So <laughs> happy. I don't want to depress our viewers today. No, please. We're working on it. So, we're working okay, on it. the gorgeous Jason Statham, 47. He's going yeah. out with the uh, fantastic... What's her name? Model Girl? from Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Mm -hmm. um, what's the new film called that they're in? The Expendables 3, I think, isn't it? And he, there's a fun, funny story. I don't know if it's funny, but he, <laughs> he's, I, I didn't know that he was an Olympic diver. So, really? yeah, he was an Olympic oh. diver, even though he's a famous actor, which saved his life. Because oh. in that film, he had to do um, something which was, a, it was to do with a stunt in a, in a lorry. And it was in the Black Sea, but the vehicle was out of control completely but he managed to get out and literally dive a huge oh, foot wow. down and was alive but if Gosh. he was if he'd been with Stallone and the other cast there's no way that he would have made no it way. so there you go wow. something which is something, something very positive to. see skills yeah <laughs> yeah and can I can I uh, it's not on there but the, can but, the, the I can say what I want to that the beloved Cressida Yes. Oh yes, you keep going on about her. What's going on? I still think <laughs> I, I still her? think <laughs> the things happen. Well, Cressida now is actually getting a lot of artistic recognition as an actress, uh, and it's even been muted that she might be working with uh, Cumberbatch. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch oh, shortly Benedict. next year, and and one and she's been put into the frame for doing you know a, a, a quite a serious play with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I hope I hope she does. 
Okay. You know, I hope she does sort of I mean, she does, she's a performer. Forward. I think she's a dancer, isn't she, more? So she's yeah, sort but, of but in she's, the Yeah, but she's been doing a lot of acting as well now. Good you know, for her. How old is she? Her. Good for her. She's, she's only in her early 20s, yeah. though, so she's, 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 you know, she's a young thing. Right? Okay. She's a very young thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have run out of time. Okay. Oh. <laughs> she always looks so upset when I say we've run out of time. Stories. Next time. <laughs> we'll save them for next time. <laughs> That's All right, but do hang around because we've got some great um, guests on in we just will. a moment. So do join us after the break today. because we we'll also have our fitness tip from Jane on park bench exercises. And I'll be talking with Jamie Daniel on youth violence and the one punch that tragically took the life of his nephew, nephew in 2012. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before I speak to my first guest, let's take a look at this fitness tip from Jane on park bench exercises. Hi everyone, it's Jane here with your fitness tips. As you can see, I'm out in the beautiful outdoors um, and I'm next to a common or garden bench that you'll find in any park that you go to. So I wanna show you some simple exercises to prove that you can get fit outdoors. You don't necessarily need to go to a gym. So um, bear in mind that if you do these exercises I'm gonna show you, especially the step ups, you'd wanna warm up and stretch first. So I just wanna say that, you wanna do a little warm up first. This is quite hard because some of you might remember the Reebok step everyone used to do the classes. Well, this is the same thing, but it's much higher. So let me just show you how you would safely do a step up on a bench like this. I'm just gonna turn my back on you, excuse my back for a minute. You would come up with one leg, up, up, down, down. Now, can you see that I've got my whole foot on the bench? I don't wanna have my foot hanging off because I'm more likely to fall off and I'm gonna change legs. Now what you could do is alternate legs every time, or you could do say 10 on one leg and 10 on the other. If you wanna make it a little bit harder, you push your arms up, bring your arms down. Elevating your arms raises your heart rate. And I tell you what, do a few of these and you'll feel it here straight away. And the next day you'll really know that you've worked your bum and the legs. It's a great exercise. I'll show you another one for the chest, the shoulders and the arms. You can do a press up on the bench. So, you know, if you haven't got a mat and you want to do some upper body work in the park, check this out. So you have your hands nice and wide, take it down and up. And the great thing about doing press ups on the bench is it's actually easier than with your hands on the floor. Having that elevation makes it a little bit easier. So if you can't manage a full press up normally, you might find that you can on a bench, which is great. Next one's for your triceps, the back of the arm. I'll show you the easy version. The easy version is with your knees bent. Now I'm not gonna let my elbows come out, see that? You gotta keep your elbows pointing backwards and you dip down and lift. If you're nice and strong in the shoulders, make sure you don't do this by the way. If you're nice and strong, straighten out your legs and dip from there. So there's more body weight going into your arms like this. These are quite tough. You might only wanna do sets of 10 at a time. Maybe do a set of triceps, set of press ups, then do your cardio, your step ups, then repeat your triceps and your chest. There's more cardio you can do as well on the bench. I'll show you one more thing. Say you wanna raise your heart rate a little bit. You can do these runs like this. You can also do the cheats burpees. The burpees that everyone hates, I'm gonna show you one. I'm only gonna do one, because I hate them to die. They're good for you, but I do hate them. Up, down. Everyone hates them, but they're very good for you. Okay, cheats version. Here, up. Here, and up. Okay, folks, enjoy your outdoor fitness, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Jane. And now I have with me Jamie Denya. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Chrissy. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Really good. Thank you for this uh, 
opportunity to have me on. Well, today. definitely brilliant to have you on the show because you've yeah. got something very important to talk about. But first, well, tell us about your, your nephew, Connor, what happened? Connor's um, life was taken on the 14th of April 2012 uh, by a single punch. Connor was 19 years and 20 days old. The boy that took his life was 14 years old. Oh he was God. two weeks past yeah. um, his 14th birthday. There were three boys that were involved in Connor's murder. One of them was 13, two of them were 14. So it just emphasizes the, uh, the um, you know, the realms of reality that this, mm. that this uh, stretches that a 14 year old can actually become a murderer from that's an so act. Cool that's considered to be socially acceptable. But what brought it on though? Was it, was it a fight? Was it like a, just a... <laughs> it was, it was um, something that escalated from something so small, which Normally, was... Normally, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the, you know, the heartbreaking thing, that if it was something major, I mean, not that it would, uh, you know, make it any better, but for the mm. smallest of reasons, people were losing their lives and it's, you know, over, you know, a look, uh, yeah. a, a bit of banter that's been taken wrong that it escalates to someone literally in a nutshell where um, through an act that's considered mm. to be socially acceptable because people are doing it up and down the country at half past two in the morning when they're thrown out of pubs and, and, and clubs and some people even think that they um, haven't had a good night out unless, unless they've had a punch up. But yeah. you know, it's within, it's within our vocabulary, it's within our, uh, our being as well, you know, because mm. You know, how often have you heard it said, you know, I'm going to spark you out, I'm going to punch your teeth in, you know, I'm going to yeah. put your lights out. But, uh, you, know, you know, people are literally toying with the difference of your family coming to visit you mm. in, in a police cell while you've got a murder or manslaughter charge hanging over your head, or your family are coming to visit you in an intensive care unit. That's where they're yeah. coming, coming to say their final goodbyes to you. Now, you wouldn't actually think like a punch, a single punch could actually do that, but it's... I was shocked when I read that, to be honest. Yeah, and it's, it's very much under the radar, but it's on the rise killer now. Um, and this is why there's so much emphasis needed. This is why I've uh, taken up the mantle of, of um, conducting these educational uh, lectures and workshops mm. in schools, colleges, universities, um, uh, boxing clubs, uh, youth offender institutes and prisons, bringing, bringing this message because there's so much emphasis put on knife and gun crime, and rightly so, but you ask anyone, if you stab someone, it's very, very likely they're going to die. If you shoot someone, very likely they're going to die. Yeah. But a lot of people think, well, you know, what's going to happen with a punch? Is it, is it a case of their head comes clean off of their shoulders and it goes rolling down the road? What is it? But no, I, I'm bringing that simple education because this one punch murder now has been called um, the coward's punch because yeah. research, the evidence that's on YouTube, the people that have lost their lives, uh, the punch is administered either from behind or from mm -hmm. the side, yeah. um, they're knocked out instantly, they fall to the ground full weight, their head hits the floor, they die of severe brain damage. Connor's yeah. life uh, was taken through a ruptured brainstem. My gosh, that's awful. So now, um, obviously, bef before this, you weren't working with you, were you? What were you doing before? No, 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 not at all, just a, just a normal plasterer. I mean, this is, this is something that I've, I've, I've actually taken upon myself out of respect to Connor, mm -hmm. because trust me, if I can stop one family from going through this, this um, horrendous situation, then it's then it's worth it. Because mm -hmm. trust me, Chrissy, I, I've 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 witnessed hell on earth. I have literally heard cries of pain from my sister, my brother-in-law, early hours of the morning. It's literally I've seen um, you know businesses go under. I've seen uh, you, you know possessions had to be sold to actually pay bills, I've seen um, you, you, you know, depression seep in, I've seen relationships come under strain, and, it's, and it's, no, it's no picnic. But do you know what the reason in which I do it? Is because I made Connor a promise. When he was declared forever asleep on his hospital bed, I mm. made him a promise, I whispered into his ear, and I'm just keeping a promise. That's all yeah. I'm doing. Now, you, you are doing you know, great stuff. You're, you're going, going, doing lots of talks everywhere mm. and stuff. But how did, it, how did you get into it in the first place? How did you sort of 
because obviously you're doing really well with it mm. now and lots of you know high demand and stuff yeah. so but how did you actually get the ball rolling in the first because it must have been hard at the beginning oh, because of very all the emotions so. that you were going through and very the family so. and everything uh, you know it was just literally reaching out to schools and and saying look this is what happened to my nephew would you be interested in this workshop that i conduct just just literally making myself busy and you know you, you know the workshop itself is very very powerful and when i go into youth offender institutes and prisons the feedback that i get is is nothing short of phenomenal they literally yeah. say if i had this talk this workshop in any shape way or form when i was in school there was a high chance a very very high chance that i would not be where mm. i am now you know yeah. getting the feedback from the teachers from the pupils saying uh you, you, you know it's made me think differently i'm in a different mindset now um mm. that i know that i'm on the right path i know what i'm doing works it's it's literally not because of me it's because of the message that i bring and who it's about connor saunders amazing individual this boy was was very very unique um he done things without boasting his character speaks volumes when when his life was taken he gave the greatest gift he gave the gift of life he saved six people with his organs he was an organ wow. donor life giver wow. the, he he never told us that at the age of 16 he signed the gift of life organ donation register but that's his character yeah. he done things without boasting so mm. this is my way of paying the ultimate respect that i can which will never be enough mm. never be enough because i'm i walk my path racked with guilt racked with regret why wasn't i there why wasn't i there to catch him But Why didn't I catch him? You know, and and it's and it's silly because you know he lived 234 miles away from me. There was no reason mm. for me to be in Brighton that night. But I still, what, even if he had to take that punch. Why was not there to catch him? And that's what Jamie, goes through. Jamie, you have nothing to feel guilty you know. because what you're doing now is absolutely mm. brilliant. Mm. And I'm sure James um, Connor's really, really proud of you for I everything so. that you're doing. Definitely. I really. Hope I know so. people do feel you know guilty about things for when things happen to family members and stuff, but. What you're doing is absolutely phenomenal, mm. and I'm sure you've saved many lives from the talks. That, as you said, from the prisons that you've and mm. schools and everything, you've saved many lives already. Mm. Brilliant job. I hope so. Definitely. I hope so. You know. I wish we could talk more, but we've run out of time. No worries at all. <laughs> Thank no you worries. so much for Thank sharing you. that, and all the best. And please uh, keep us informed about what you're doing and everything. Absolutely. I'd like to know more. Absolutely. But thanks for having me on. All right. Thank absolute you, pleasure. Okay, dokie okay, guys, it is time for a break, but do stay tuned because afterwards we'll be joined with Neil Hanna, who'll be sharing with us the tough times he had whilst growing up in Luton and after witnessing a murder in the USA. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before I speak to Neil, my next guest, let's take a look at how to make traditional Indian potato cakes with medulla baljika. Well, for the starter is my own invention. It's a traditional uh, potato cake, spiced potato cake. These are just boiled potatoes. You just have to actually boil them in their skin because we don't want the starch to escape at all. Oh, so when you're making mashed potatoes as well, you just leave them in the skin. It's better, is it? It's better, always better. Right, you know, mash the potatoes. You can use a potato masher, fine. Because I, I, I have this a giant garlic crusher, <laughs> <laughs> potato ricer, oh. which makes nice um, smooth potato. It's like making macaroni. It's not hard because the potatoes are so cold now. It's mashed, can you see? It's mashed. But it won't come out as easily when they are warm. I am going to add one red chili, which will be chopped. Fresh coriander. I like I don't make them really really fine because I like the kind of rustic look so I just leave them roughly chopped. And the next magic ingredient in this is some freshly ground ginger. And 
add a little bit of oil to preserve it and then keep it in the fridge or oh, freezer in the salt and that's it so you just simply mix it up you like using your hands to maybe get in there yes i like to feel what i'm yeah. cooking mm -hmm. Um, so to this I'm going to add one egg and some breadcrumbs to bind it. This is soft um, brown breadcrumb. You can use white if you like, but it's 90 grams here. Yeah? And one egg. This is large egg. Right. Yeah. You have to make sure that you uh, mix everything really, really well. This is a mixture I made and chilled earlier on. You make sure that you can chill it for at least um, half an hour. Sprinkle some flour on the board. And that's a heart shape. Aww. Potato cake, right? That's so cute. Drop them into this nice hot oil. So how long do you fry them for? Um, just until they're brown on both sides, you know, maybe a couple of minutes on each side, that's en enough. There, the starter is ready. We really shouldn't play these videos when I'm hungry. You're right, Neil. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> that made hungry. you hungry? It, I am hungry. Right, let's yeah. try and get our, our minds off the potato <laughs> cakes and talk about what we have to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just have to correct something that I said earlier because mm -hmm. you didn't witness the murder in the USA. It was actually Luton. Mm -hmm. But can you tell us about your upbringing there, Neil? Sure. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Luton. I was born there. Um, we moved away. Um, my parents split and we moved up to an ex coal mining village. Mm -hmm. um, called Plesley and my parents split at the time and then we had a stepdad and stuff and it all got very violent and messy lots of domestic violence and things mm -hmm. um, but actually before that even even then before that my dad um, pretty much drunk I would guess every night and all kinds of different kind of domestic stuff going on mm -hmm. and violence and, all that. and I don't even know if I should share this on TV but um, there was one night where I don't re recall this but he'd come home um, so drunk and went to the toilet on either me or my brother. So oh, it was just, or even both of us, I don't yeah. know. Um, but anyway, so then we moved up to an ex coal mining village and the, the mine had just closed because of all the different changes up there in, in the coal, coal mining industry. Um, and that was our playground. We had a coal mine as our playground, basically. All the, all the trucks were left there as just remote mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, disused. Um, and then with the stepdad that we had, again, it wasn't, it was just friction all the time between mm. my brother and me, sorry, my, myself and my brother and, and him. Uh, and my mum struggled. She wanted to do the best. She wanted to make sure that we had a, a father figure, but it just didn't work out. It was just a constant kind of mess of, of arguments, really. Mm -hmm. um, and then we moved back to Luton when I was 13. So we'd kind of come from a nice sort of suburban place, then to a village place, and yeah. then back to a council estate. And we went to... Quite unsettled, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. And, and lots of school changes, mm -hmm. which are not good for anybody, really. Um, and then, yeah, we moved in with our grandmother. She, was, uh, she had Parkinson's at the time, so I was a carer for her, as long as it was with my parent, my mum and my brother. Uh, but I did a lot of, of the help around the house for her. Mm. Um, and we lived in a tough neighbourhood, you know, so it wasn't the easiest place to live. Um, to give you an example, the, the actual estate that I'm from, which is called Farley Hill in Luton, um, is where the EDL, pretty much the, the guys from there all came from. Uh, and even then, you know, when I'm, this is a long time ago, this is sort of early 90s, there were lots of gang fights uh, between white and, and, and Asian, primarily Pakistani and, and English people. And most of my friends, ironically, were uh, not white people. So I was sort of, things hard for it you did, though, like, it made it very difficult imagine. because um, there were certain expectations from the people I went to school with mm -hmm. about what I should do and say about certain groups of people and or getting involved in fights and uh, and that's not what I'm about so mm -hmm. um, 
and my neighbour was incredibly racist, so it, it was just a real challenge to grow up in that environment. And when did you um, actually witness the, the murder? The murder wasn't until wasn't my early, early 20s, um, which still feels like quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm almost 40 now, but it still feels like a long time ago. Um, but it really brought it back. I'd moved out of town, and then I'd moved back into town. Um, I'd gone out on a night out with some friends, and um, it, all, it all just happened, literally, as we left a bar. I think I was, I was going to see my girlfriend the next morning mm -hmm. and didn't want to leave too late. Um, and literally, as we walked out of the door, myself and my friend just saw it all happen in front of us. Um, which, it, it took its toll in terms of its emotional, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just very tough, very tough. And how, lots of, but how did you like get over that? Well, the, did you the, get over it? Um, yeah, I, I think I have now for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but back then, the, the the tougher part was friends and family, and people saying, you know, it's the code of the street. You don't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say to people that this is what I've seen. Do you see what I so mean? So you you expect to keep quiet about it? Yeah, for certain, certain people. Uh, I don't recall any friend saying to me or family member saying to me, you know this is good what you're doing and go for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I did call the police, I did make that call because mm -hmm. I don't believe in a society where I think that death and murder is mm -hmm. acceptable. Um, and it took its toll, it took its toll on my relationship, it took its toll on, on me uh, as, a, as you know, uh, uh, an ambitious young man in a mm -hmm. way. Um, but the upside to it is that after all of that, I've, I've actually think it's something that's made me in a sense. It's, it's, Solidified my, myself as being a conscious person and and doing what I believe in, in and what doing sense? what I believe. Quite interesting. Um, I'm quite spiritual now, mm -hmm. and um, over the years, I think very early on in my teens, um, I was quite I was introduced to Buddhism, and and I always used to bump into Harry Krishnas. Luton always has Harry Krishnas giving books as well, mm -hmm. and I know they're completely separate religions, but the the, the, the spiritualism is very similar. Is that something that's helped you sort of over? Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, Is there anything else that's helped you as well? Uh, music. Yeah. Hip hop's <laughs> been a huge part of my life, and uh, and continues to. Um, but the concept of hip hop and what the true ethics of hip hop's all about, mm -hmm. which is peace, love, happiness, and having fun. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. about gangs and guns and showing off body parts. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, like a lot of MTV video MTV videos do now. Uh, no, we've only got about a minute left. Can you tell we? us okay. what you're doing? <laughs> Sorry, I know the time flies on this show, it really okay. does. So can you tell us about what, what stuff you're sure, doing yeah. now? Sure, um, yeah. I'm making a couple of films. Uh, I made, we've made one documentary that I filmed in Hollywood uh, with, about Keras One, the rapper, wow. who again was one of my kind of uh, role models pretty much back as uh -huh. a teenager. So uh, yeah, big up to, uh, to Chris, to Keras One, for <laughs> helping me and in, in, in enabling me to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm also making another documentary about um, someone I knew in Luton, only recently has died in police custody uh, in November last year called Leon Briggs. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been filming a documentary about that. And then the next step busy. for me... Busy, you really busy then. Yeah, and there's more yeah. to it. There's other yeah. music projects, but the final one is um, I've been writing a script uh, about the life of David Icke and I'm, I've met with David over the years and uh, he's agreed for me to do that so that's sort of the documentaries are first yeah and then hopefully the features are how, after how do you fit all this in <laughs> i work a lot <laughs> you work hard I'm pretty right? much seven days a week really yeah but you need to take time to rest as well neil i know i've learned that now <laughs> yeah. i've learned that so. balance we'll yeah. balance yeah all right it was so. lovely talking to you sorry we've run out of time no problem, yeah. but all nice the best you. with everything that you're, you're doing yeah, neil yeah. thank you so much thank you, yeah. okay so do stay tuned because after the break we'll have singer matt ramsey with us for an interview and also a performance of his song, Say What You Will. And I'll also be answering a question from a viewer. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Well, now I'm joined with singing sensation Matt Ramsey. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thanks How for are having you? me on. It's brilliant to have you here. Now, I've heard a lot about you. Right. And I just wanted to ask, first of all, do you actually come from a musical background? 
I do come from a musical background. I kind of grew up through the Salvation Army and within the music, within the Salvation Army in particular. So yeah. from a musical family within playing brass instruments and also singing side of things as well. Yeah. So people should recognise that you had a talent from when you were quite young then? Um, probably not, maybe not no? through singing. <laughs> um, I, kinda, I didn't really start singing properly until maybe I was about 15. Oh, okay. So I didn't really sing that much when I was that young, no. Uh -huh. And when you were 15, what happened? When I was 15, I kind of felt I, I was getting into enjoying singing and mm. hearing my own voice, um, maybe listening to more music. And then yeah. it was a kind of decision of, no, I can actually... I can actually maybe do this kind of thing. So I did enjoy it. So then it was a case of, I would like to do more with my voice. Okay, and how did the things escalate from there then? It kind of escalated from um, starting off going to a singing teacher, um, Robert Wisher, um, mm -hmm. from Glasgow. And then from then, it was a case of posting videos of myself on YouTube. And then before I knew it, I'd been picked up by <laughs> my own manager and then I was off to record my debut single. Oh, brilliant. And how have things progressed from there then? Because now you're, you're doing quite a lot, aren't you? You're, yeah, from then I've had... You had a single? Yeah, the single is out now. It's, um, you can download it on iTunes now. Uh -huh. um, that was written, a brand new song, Say What You Will, that was written mm. by Robert Pusey. Who and that's what you'll be singing today? It will be, yes. Yeah. Um, the song um, Robert Pusey had wrote for me, um, Robert's wrote stuff for the Dooleys and the Nolan sisters as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a real honour to, for him to write this song for me How as would well. you describe your song and your, your, your voice and music? How would you describe this, it? This song is something completely different. It's not yeah. anything you could possibly put into a particular genre. Uh -huh. So it is really, really different. Um, and Which I already think, makes it stand out. Yes, and rest, I, think, right? I think that kind of helps for my own kind of view of singing. Yeah. Because I maybe my kind of voice is maybe suited to, to musical theatre, uh -huh. but from this song, it's a, a kind of a different voice on a kind of different song, so it's something going to be okay. completely different to, to people listening. What's been the highlight for you, Matt, in all of this? The highlight, I'd probably say the kind of journey of it all. Mm. It's from one minute from doing, just singing, whatever, to then straight away going down to, <laughs> going down to Western Supermare to record, and then doing other gigs, etc., with other people, mm. and then, Getting to this opportunity as well. Now it sounds all sounds very glamorous, but is it quite tough work as well? Is it hard? It can be. It can yeah. certainly with the travel. The travel's yeah. not easy. Um, Travelling's good, isn't it? I know, but <laughs> I know, but um, certainly travelling, getting home at maybe five o'clock in the morning or whatever. Oh gosh, and yeah, that's not good. You're straight back to your normal day job or whatever afterwards. That's yeah. that's maybe not the easiest thing, but um, but it's worth the sacrifice. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And what about future plans? Where where do you see yourself? Future plan. I hope that from taking off from the single that yeah. we're look, already looking at an album as well mm -hmm. and then there'll be other gigs that'll be coming up hopefully so okay. we're looking that it's all on the up. All right, and, all just, and just before we, we hear you sing, who was your, who would you say was your inspiration? Inspiration wise I'd probably say there's been a kind of variety, there's been various different parts of me that's maybe been seen through mm -hmm. others but um, I'd probably say from a, a musical point of view, I've listened to a lot of maybe Michael Ball and Neil Sedaka and to okay. the different yeah, bit of yeah. Michael Bublé as well. Uh -huh. So there's been, like an, I think, maybe a mix of everything that's all came, in, came into the one. OK, Matt, it's lovely speaking to you. You too. Thank you very much Please, for You're going to get ready now yes, to, to sing and we're really looking forward to hearing you thank sing. Thank you very much. OK, thank you thank so you. much. OK, so I'm going to answer a question from a viewer before we listen to the great voice of Matt Ramsey. Um, now this one is from Jane and she says, Hi Chrissy, I recently got engaged against my parents' wishes as they believe that me and my partner still have many issues to sort out. I love my partner very much, but I feel embarrassed to tell my parents that they were right. My partner gave me an engagement ring and I have told everyone we're getting married. But I don't believe we're ready as we're still arguing about many things. I do love him, but I don't want to keep breaking up and getting back together as we have a little girl and I don't want it to affect her. What would you do, Chrissy? Now, first of all, Jen, I have to say this reminds me very much of a friend of mine because she was having serious doubts about her engagement as well. But because, you know, all the wedding arrangements had been made and, you know, everyone knew and the invitations had been sent out, she still went ahead and even actually the day of the wedding she was in tears because she was having serious doubts about the marriage but she went ahead anyway just to please everyone just because she felt she would be embarrassed and at the end of it all after two years they got divorced so if you are having doubts i'm not saying the same thing's going to happen to you but if you are having doubts about this person or you know if you're arguing a lot i would say it's better to try and sort things out first, <clears throat> to tell everyone, you know, you're not getting married right now, you're going to sort your problems out first, rather than just go ahead just because you feel embarrassed about it, because it's going to be even worse for you later. 
So definitely don't worry about what anyone thinks. I think you need to do what's right, especially for your child as well. Get counselling if you have to and work out, work things out first before you even think of, you know, of tying the knot, I would say. So, you know, I do hope that's helped. And as I said, if you don't do it for yourselves, at least do it for your girl because she's going to be caught in the middle of this. And at the end of the day, parents aren't in the marriage, right? It's supposed to be just you and your partner and your, your own family with your daughter. OK, but if you have a question as well that you'd like to ask me, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. And before we go to Matt, also, if you would like any information about the programme, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. And if you haven't liked our Facebook page, what are you waiting for? You can go to the Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show, like the page because we have lots of nice competitions coming up too. But now let's go to Matt Ramsey. And I've forgotten the song. What's the song? Say what you will. No. <laughs> Say what you will. Take it away, Matt. <laughs> That's trying to tell me that we're through But you've no defense You can't fight against my love Say what you will Your heart will give In the madness of Castle walls to get to you. I'm castle walls to get to you. I'm hungry for love. There's no giving up the chase for you. Say what you will, your heart will give in the madness of. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>